Hi everyone, Mama Shark here. Here's the deal, thrush can basically end your breastfeeding relationship without you even knowing why and what happened. You might be like later on down the line thinking, oh my gosh, I had thrush, that's why I had that recurrent pain or that pain kept coming back. I'm here to tell you what thrush is, what you can do to prevent it, how to treat the recurrence of thrush, which is AKA yeast infections, and what doctors do not tell you, which unfortunately, I've gone to pediatricians, I've gone to OBGYNs, to lactation consultants, nobody was able to help me. They pretty much just give you the information they have, and they think that that's helpful, but it's not. I had to help myself with doing a lot of research, so you guys definitely want to watch this video to make sure that you're aware of any thrush symptoms, and you go ahead and treat before it gets really, really bad. Okay guys, just in case this video ends up being very long, I just wanted to let you guys know that I usually put the timestamps and the table of contents in the description box below, as, along with any links to any products that I talk about or any studies that I mention or any references. So definitely check the links in the description box below. So for those of you who do not know me, I had two babies, but the first one did not latch at all, the second one did latch, but what ended up happening is he had a tongue tie. And because of that tongue, tongue tie, he had a shallow latch. And because of that shallow latch, before I can even say, oh my gosh, something's going wrong, I ended up with really bad, deep wounds on both of my nipples, and it was really, really painful. I actually had to walk around the house with nothing on. That's how painful it was. Just imagine this, guys. Every time my baby wanted to eat and wanted to latch on, the pain was so bad and so it was like sharp, stabbing pain. I would literally cry. I would cry every time my baby would latch, and it was it was one of the most difficult times of my life. So what ended up happening is I would wear, every time I would wear my bra over those wounds, my bra, TMI here guys, sorry about that, but my bra would stick to my wounds. So every time I had to feed my baby every two to three hours, sometimes even less, if they're cluster feeding, I would have to take it off and re-rip open the wound every time, not to mention the baby ripping the wound open every time. Found out later down the line that he had a tongue tie. I'll tell you more about that later. If you want to subscribe, let me know in the comments if you want to know about it. But later down the line, I found out. Unfortunately, nobody told me, not the hospital, not the lactation consultant, that my baby had a tongue tie. I mean, you would think they would check for that at the hospital. But what ended up happening is I thought, okay, maybe if I use like plastic wrap, which was the most idiotic thing I've ever done in my life. Maybe if I use plastic wrap on top of my boon so that every time I'm taking off my bra, it didn't stick to me. Well, here's what ended up happening. I gave yeast the perfect growing environment. It was moist, it was perfect, a dark place that, <laughs> sorry again TMI, but it was the perfect place for for the yeast to grow. And and then I go to, uh, I kept going to a lot of lactation consultants to try to get my baby to relatch after I had to um, resort to a nipple into a bottle. Finally, like weeks later, one of the lactation consultants, they're like, you have a yeast infection. Um, and I'm like, what? And she's like, yeah. So basically, here's what you don't know, guys. If you get a yeast infection on your nipples, it's really hard to diagnose. Even sometimes doctors, like, they can't diagnose it because they, they know you can tell them, okay, well, usually the symptoms are you have some stabbing pain or you have pain spanning your nipples or shooting your in your breast. But there's really no other apparent symptoms. You might have some reddening of your nipples, some irritation, some pain, but 
Sometimes that's confused with a lot of other stuff like mastitis or vasospasms, which again, if you really want to know about those, let me know in the comments below. But it could be so many other things. And sometimes if a doctor is not well versed in it, it it's really hard to diagnose. Luckily though for me, because I had such huge wounds, um, such deep cuts, what ended up happening is you could actually see the white film on top of my wounds. So I did in fact have a yeast infection. Um, and that's what a yeast infection is, AKA thrush. Just so you guys know, if you're ever in a situation where you have to make sure that your nipples do not touch rubbing surfaces, like what happened to me, I didn't know about these beforehand, but there, there are some breast shields that you can use that you can basically put on. Um, your nipple goes obviously inside this hole and there's some air, make sure that it gets aired out. It even collects any milk that might be going in. Um, but this is a great product for you to use and make sure that you properly heal and your bra isn't constantly touching your wounds. Yeast is an infection due to candida albicans. It is a very, very contagious. So basically, as I was going to all these doctors that I mentioned earlier, trying to figure out how to get rid of this yeast infection, how to make sure it does not keep coming back, really doctors just tell you, well, okay, here's some Diflucan for you, which is an oral medication that you take to get rid of a yeast infection, which can also be used for other kinds of yeast infections. But here's what you can take. Take this Diflucan and what you need to do is just make sure your baby doesn't have it and that's what the pediatrician told me. So does your baby have it? They usually look in the mouth, um, they try to see if there's any white plaques, if there's anything that could signify like um, that they have a yeast infection, are they not wanting to take the breast, are they not wanting to eat because of the pain. Sometimes baby can, babies can even have it and they show no symptoms or they can have a white tongue and you can't scrape the white off and that's how you know they have a yeast infection. If you Google a lot of those photos, you'll see what yeast infection in a baby's mouth looks like. But it is very contagious, so you need to make sure that your baby doesn't have it because if you treat yourself with Diflucan and you're putting the baby back on the breast every time, you're reinfecting yourself. And not only that, but if they do have it, you need to make sure that you're treating both at the same time. So you're treating yourself and you're treating the baby for, for the infection. Um, for babies, you know, knowing that they're babies and they can't take all medications out there, they usually start with Nystatin and Nystatin doesn't work for all babies. So you're also risking the fact that you're treating yourself with Diflucan, but the baby is being treated with Nystatin and the Nystatin might not work. And then you're reinfecting yourself later down the line and you're having to retreat and that is when they might prescribe Diflucan depending on your baby and their situation. And then you're having to retreat yourself again. And again, it's, it's, it's a vicious cycle. Uh, they tell you to sterilize all your bottle parts, all your pumping parts, your flanges, everything that's touching your breast or touching the baby's mouth needs to be sanitized on a daily basis. I sanitized literally every time it was used. Not only that, they also tell you to wash your bed sheets, to wash your bras, like to wash them and be really diligent with that. Because I had it three times in a row, I had to keep washing and washing and washing. It was like a really vicious cycle. I even Clorox, and they tell you you need to like actually disinfect your clothes. So I Clorox my bras and this is what they look like. I mean, it was really bad. I ruined my clothes trying to get rid of this um, infection, but there are certain things that you can use other than bleach Clorox to disinfect your clothes. You can use one cup of bleach Clorox in your rinse cycle. Um, you can use one cup of distilled vinegar or you can use grapefruit seed extract, guys. I will talk about this a little bit down the line in the video, um, but this is also a really good option. Um, you would use 15 to 20 drops in your rinse cycle to also disinfect um, your clothes. Here comes the good part. 
Here's what the doctors do not tell you. There is something called a candida protocol per the Canadian Breastfeeding Foundation, and they actually specify steps on what you can do and what steps you need to take to try to treat your yeast infection without resorting directly to diflucan. And the reason you would want to do this, to be honest with you, I took diflucan right away and I took it a few times, a few cycles, trying to get rid of it. I took it a few times. I used the Candida protocol as a prevention. When I found the Candida protocol, I was so thankful for it because what I did is I continued with, with what they specify in their protocol to help me prevent the yeast infection from constantly recurring. As well as Diflucan, I started what they call APNO cream, which is all-purpose nipple cream. It, it was actually covered somewhat by my insurance. I actually had to pay $100 out of pocket. It's, uh, it was really expensive, but later down the video, I'm actually gonna give you your homemade recipe where you can make this homemade and be able to save a lot of money. Now what I want to tell you guys is with the APNO that they use that is prescribed by a doctor and that they make at a pharmacy, they actually tell you you don't necessarily need to wipe off every time you put it on. So basically it's a cream that you put on sparingly, which means until you see your whole nipple shine after every time you're pumping or every time you're breastfeeding. And they tell you that you don't necessarily need to wipe it off. Um, they actually encourage you not to wipe it off. But with a homemade recipe that I'm going to share with you, I actually urge you to wipe it off. The reason for that is because it has cortisone and this stuff, unfortunately, this stuff is linked to some really bad side effects for babies. So I actually never use this stuff I'm just telling you about it because it is an option. It's for inflammation. Most definitely make the recipe without actually using this. Again, I just didn't like the side effects that I researched. So the reason they call the APNO cream all purpose nipple cream is because you don't, you don't just have to use it for um, a yeast infection of the nipples. You can actually use it for soreness, nipple soreness. And the reason being is because it has an antibiotic in it, which kills bacteria. It has the antifungal cream portion, which kills the thrush or the yeast. And it also has a corticosteroid, which again is for the inflammation, which is what we're subbing this for. But if you want to go with the one specially made uh, for this purpose, I would definitely go through your doctor and ask for the all-purpose nipple cream. Once you start using the all-purpose nipple cream, I was pretty much putting that on and putting this on to make sure I don't wipe it off with my bra every time. It wasn't a fun time, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. And usually with yeast infections, it takes a while before you can actually feel relief. Even with Diflucan, they tell you the third or fourth day is when you feel relief. Same thing with the all-purpose nipple cream. It took a few days before you can actually feel the relief. It took me seven days before I stopped seeing that white film on my nipples. So yeah, it's not a fun time. So that's why I would highly urge you to use the preventative measures on not ever getting this yeast infection on your nipples. Here comes the recipe for the all-purpose nipple cream. So this stuff you can buy over the counter. You first have the Cortisone 10. The links to these is in the description box below as well as the items listed out for you. So you don't have to take notes right now. Definitely refer to the description box below. And you have the, like we said, the Cortisone is for the inflammation. The Polysporin is for the antibiotic portion of it. And then we have the Lotrimin, or you can get the Monistat. Um, both of these are antifungal creams that, again, you can get over the counter. I know this says that this is for athlete's foot, but athlete's foot is also due to yeast infections. Anyway, 
lots of doctors use this for a lot of other yeast infections so what you need to do um, is use all three together in equal portions i did find a cheaper a little bit more affordable than lotrimin with equate same ingredients for the antifungal cream so anyway you take all these three creams and you you add equal portions of each which means if you're gonna do one tablespoon of polysporin do one tablespoon of lotrimin and do one tablespoon of cortisone if it was me i would not use this i would just use these two which is antibiotic and the antifungal creams use equal portions so one tablespoon of each mix together put in a jar that you have or a tupperware or whatever you have at home this you again use it the same as all-purpose nipple cream you put it on your nipples sparingly until you they're shiny and then you go about your day when it comes to breastfeeding or to pumping i would just rinse off my nipples really fast and breastfeed or breast pump and then move back to putting it on again um and again it will take a few days to actually see some improvement okay guys so here comes the prevention for you do not ever put plastic wrap on your nipples do not ever create basically um any any situation where your nipples can't breathe the more they can breathe the better um so use breathable fabric wash your bras daily when you're breastfeeding or even i would highly recommend using some kind of pads to catch milk and again not create that moisture environment where yeast can grow uh, whatever you want to use i mean they're they're all great there's a bunch of great brands out there i will put some of these in the links for you below so definitely use that throw it away after each use do not rewear over and over again the other thing that you can do which is what i did is use the grapefruit seed extract so make sure you're not buying grape seed extract you make sure you have to buy the grapefruit seed extract and this stuff the active ingredient that you have to see on the back of it is citricidal okay so you have to make sure that's what it has for it to actually work so i mixed two to five drops of this in one ounce of water and I took a really small jar and left it in that jar and then you would use your q-tip take that dunk your q-tip in it and cover your nipple with it and basically it just cleans that off and makes sure that you're cleaning off anything that might be growing on your nipple this stuff can also come in supplement form and you can take them orally that's also what i did i took it orally to make sure that i will not go back into that same vicious recurrent cycle of yeast infections the recommended dose was 250 milligrams three times a day but i honestly to be honest with you i just took it once a day and i was fine i really just want to give you a heads up though you're not supposed to be taking this with the diflucan uh, they tell you don't do it together so make sure you're not doing it together make sure that uh, again if you're going to do this don't do diflucan or if you're going to do diflucan do, don't do this at the same time i did it as a preventative measure after i was done with my diflucan also guys um you can't take this with domperidone and that's a medication used to increase your milk supply if you want other easier ways to increase your milk supply um, definitely go to my how I increase my milk supply video in the links in the description box below so the next thing that I used as a preventative is a probiotic and I love this stuff I love the um, garden of life probiotics I actually take the raw probiotics but the kind that you need per the recommendations of the Canadian breastfeeding foundation you need the probiotics that has acidophilus with bifidus and um, I know that the brand in the description box below it's actually the same brand but a different kind of shelf stable probiotic has that bacteria species for you however if you are going to use the probiotics make sure that you're spreading it apart at least spreading the um, grapefruit seed extract and the probiotics an hour apart because this stuff 
will kill your probiotics. So you need to make sure that your probiotic is taking full effect without the GSE um, killing off what you're taking. Um, so that's what, what I did, to be honest with you guys. I did a probiotic in the morning and I did this at night. So I spread it off even more than one hour. Okay, here's the last thing, guys. And I wanna warn you about this one. The reason I'm mentioning it in this video is because I wanted you guys to be aware and informed. Um, and I, I, you probably have come across this in your research and it's even in um, that link, Candida Protocol for the Breastfeeding Foundation below where, um, where they talk about the Candida Protocol is a lot of women used to use gentian violet. Um, I want to urge you guys to not use this. Do not use this. Um, there's actually, by the Health Canada, which is like the FDA of Canada, they actually found risk of cancer with using this. So they actually stopped using it. They use it a lot uh, with animal um, treatment as well, and they stopped using that as well. The FDA also does not recognize that it's safe or effective. So please do not use this. You don't want to expose your um, babies to this. Um, I'm not going to even talk about how they used to use this, so just don't use it. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching my video. I hope you uh, found it informative and I tried my best to compile everything in one spot for you so that it is the perfect uh, video where you can get all the information you need, both what's usually practiced in clinical offices by doctors and what can be found naturally out there in supplements. If you guys like my video, please hit the thumbs up button for me and let me know what else you guys want to see on my channel, how I can help you, what research I can do for you. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon.